Hello everyone, and today I'm here to preview the game that Minnesota has with the Buffalo Bills on Sunday. And so let's get right to it, shall we? Now, Buffalo, offensively, not the best. So they're 31st in total offense, only averaging 223 yards a game. 31st in passing offense at only averaging 139.5 yards a game and 31st in sacks allowed, allowing 11 through the two games so far. But at least they're consistent with 31st. Uh, but where that does change is they're 25th in rushing offense, 83.5 yards a game, and 21st in yards per carry at 3.8. And they are 30th in third down conversions, only converting 24%, which is pretty, pretty low. And... I think everyone kind of knew who would win the matchup there on, you know, when they're on offense. I think everyone kind of knows they're traveling to what is a very tough defense to play. And it's on the road. And they don't usually lose at U.S. Bank Stadium. So I think everyone kind of knew what to expect there. And defensively, uh, their numbers actually aren't the worst defensively so far. They are 18th in total defense, allowing 359 yards a game, 16th in passing yards allowed at 246, and 18th in sacks allowed at 4, and 22nd in rushing yards allowed, but they are 11th in yards per carry allowed at 3.8, and 21st in third down conversions allowed at 39%. Now, I think some of those um, pass defense numbers could be a little skewed as um, we saw... You know, the first two weeks where they're just getting, you know, decimated by some of these people. And then you start seeing, uh, you know, they would be running out the clock more. You get more runs in there. And, yeah. So, that is what it is. And so I think some of this could be a little skewed. And so I kind of anticipate, like, I think that's why you see the sack numbers down so much. They're, no one's really throwing on them. And... I think that changes a little bit, but I think that's another reason why you see their sacks up so much when they're allowing them, because they're playing from down from behind so much that it's they're required to throw. And, you know, teams just pin their ears back and just, let's go. Uh, now their injury report is pretty lengthy. They did have two, peoples not, two people not practicing for uh, the sake of resting, in Kyle Williams and Lorenzo Alexander, but Shaq Lawson did not practice with a hamstring. Uh, the rest of these guys are limited in practice. With uh, Kelvin Benjamin, he has a hip. Philip Gaines with an elbow. Teron Johnson is his shoulder. Uh, Taiwan Jones, a running back, he has a head injury. Now, you gotta be careful with the head injuries. And Ray Ray McLeod, he's a receiver, but he's more of a returner for him. Uh, he has a knee injury, and LaShawn McCoy. Obviously, we, we know about LaShawn McCoy with the rib cartilage injury. He was limited today. And on to Minnesota we go. Offensively, they are fifth in total yards, averaging 411.5 yards a game. Fifth in passing yards at 319.5. Uh, they are 16th in sacks allowed at 5, so kind of middle of the pack. Uh, they are 22nd in rushing yards with 92 and 23rd in yards per carry at 3.7. Now that's concerning. It's very concerning with uh, both numbers there. Uh, last year we kind of saw Minnesota kind of hover around this, like 3.7 to 3.9 kind of all year. Uh, but we just ran it so much that we ended up being 7th in rushing yards, but we were like 24th in yards per carry or something like that. And this year they're just not running it as much as they did last year, causing that to be down lower in terms of the actual total rushing yards of 22nd. So far through two games. So, yeah, take these stats for what they're worth, though. Like, it's only two games. So, you know, some teams, they, they change it a lot. Like, defensively, well, I don't know if we get much better than this just because of the schedule, but... So far, we're 14th in total yards allowed at 339, 15th in passing yards allowed at 245 yards a game, and but we're 5th in sacks this year with 7 already, and we're 13th in rushing yards allowed 
you know, 94 a game, 11th in yards per carry allowed, 3.8. We're tied with Buffalo on that. And we are 10th in third down conversions allowed, allowing only 35%. And like I said, I think on Sunday we're going to see a very typical thing. We probably should win the defensive matchup there with Buffalo when, you know, you get Josh Allen, rookie quarterback. But um, injury report, Dalvin Cook, hamstring, did not practice. Pat Elfline, full practice again today. And Everson Griffin, he, had his, he has a knee, he did not practice. Holton Hill, he has an ankle, he was full go. Rashad Hill, foot injury, he was limited. And David Morgan and Marcus Sherrills did not practice because of a knee and ribs injury. Now, some of my notes with this is when Elfline comes back, which it looks like he's come back this week, we have, uh, I think we're going to get much more balance on offense. I think, because uh, I think that's where Brett Jones seemed to have struggled, especially in these last week or two, is you see him and sometimes he just gets immediate pressure right up the center in the run game. And that's not good. I think that's part of where our 3.7 comes from. I think once we get Pat Elfline in there, we're going to see these holes start to open more. And it will be nice. It will be nice, especially considering, you know, the play speed is much faster with Elfline. I think he, he's a stronger player. Like, everything kind of goes up with Pat Elfline as opposed to Brett Jones. And right up the middle, that's what you need. And I think now with that comes my next point of I think we might be able to find time and success in the passing game again this week just because they had two corners on that injury report plus one retired. Because you had uh, Philip Gaines and Teron Johnson both on the injury report, both corners, and Vontae Davis retired last week at halftime. So, yeah. And another thing, don't know if this is a popular opinion or not. I'm calling a Brian O'Neill start at right tackle this week uh, because Rashad Hill was limited today, and the other day he did not practice at all. So I'm thinking Rashad Hill is active, but he's kind of reverted to, okay, if that gets out of hand, you go back in. But I think we're going to see O'Neal at least start the game. And I would imagine that he will finish the game for the most part, even if the score did get out of hand. Like, I'm not going to treat this like it's a, you know, I think that we're going to win this game. Because my prediction here is going to be 30 to 14. But I don't know if, you know, we should treat... Like, it's still an NFL team. So I won't chalk it up as, like, we should immediately just win. Because we've seen these things go wrong before. And, you know, we should win this game. Just do what you're supposed to do. And my injury... I have an injury kind of talk here. Because we saw some of the guys like Griffin and... Dalvin Cook, who didn't practice, and David Morgan also didn't practice, and Marcus Sherrills. Now, David Morgan is a little bit more interesting because I think we're going to see some more Tyler Conklin, which it will be interesting to see if he can kind of step up into that role as more of this blocking tight end that will once in a while get an opportunity in the pass game to see what he does with him. And Marcus Sherrills, he has a rib injury. I would imagine he's going to actually go in the game, though. I think. Unless they want to put Mike Hughes back there, if he's really that dinged up, I would imagine he goes. But Griffin and Dalvin Cook, I think with Dalvin Cook having a hamstring injury, especially after the ACL, I think um, I think you don't play him this game. I think Latavius Murray is more than good enough, if, especially if you're getting Elfline back. Latavius Murray is more than good enough, and you get to see uh, Mike Boone and Rock Thomas some more as well, see if you know they have any other potential going forward as well because we know what Dalvin Cook is Dalvin Cook is going to be the three down back every time he's healthy we know what he is but especially when you're considering it's a short week next week on, on next Thursday night against the Rams on the road I would keep Dalvin Cook I don't want him leaving this game injured just to not have him for the Ram game I would much rather potentially just have him for the Ram game as opposed to losing him for several weeks against Buffalo and kind of the same thing with Everson Griffin because I kind of like the depth behind the, him as well with uh, Deshaun Bauer and uh, Stephen Weatherly so kind of want to see those two in 
more meaningful snaps. Steven Weatherly had a nice game last week, I thought. And just to see who really separates themselves between the two. And I do think we can get by without either of them in this game. Because, I mean, especially along the defensive line, we technically don't need Griffin every game. Even though Griffin's amazing, we want to have Griffin out there, obviously. But the other three are so good that it doesn't really... He's not required for us to have a pass rush, necessarily. And if there is some pass rush downfall there, if, like, if it's big enough to be really noticeable and you need to get it going, you can always still blitz Anthony Barr. And... I don't know, like, unless you have to play him, I really don't see any reason why we should really play Griffin or Cook. I feel like we can get by this game without those two. And yeah, yeah. Like I said, prediction, 30-14 Minnesota. I'm going to leave you guys with that. Let me know what you guys think of this game down below in the comments. And until next time, I bid you adieu.